Caution is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and is this the first top ten on the new channel name? I think so for me, yeah. I think so. And for Kat as well. Hey, here's Kat. She plays games with us. Uh, and we're actually doing her favorite genre, top ten cooperative games. Um, cooperative games are... It's, it's very hard to make them miss for me. Like... Um, I made my list based off how how much you guys had to work together um, to make to for it to be cooperative. Because there are cooperative games out there that are just like, guys, shut the fuck up. I'll I'll do, let me do everything, and then you're just kind of there along for the ride. I like co-op games because I do a lot of solo gaming as well, and I think oh. like most co-op games, traditional well, co-op games, can be played solo. Yeah. So yeah. I like them because they they have variation, and That's, I put mine in order by. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. Well, not, not like how much they work together. I'm, I'm my time yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, have to, I like all my games, and I obviously <laughs> like them. Um, but how do you make your list, babe? Uh, off emotion. Off just, emotion. Just like Top ten emotional games. How that's much, a, that's a good one. How much you how much seethed you... with anger while playing Spartacus. <laughs> you know what the sad thing is, though. Uh, caveat. Uh, I did go in that game with an open mind, just so you know. Right. Like, okay, just. I was gonna say you're, I was gonna, you, you're the one that asked me to bring it over and play it. I know. I, know. I was like, okay. You know what's crazy though is like that shows how much my taste has changed yeah. in like these five years. Is like in the five years at the beginning, I would have loved everything about that game, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I think I'm just dead inside. All right. Anyway, so we're going to start with an honorable mention. Cat, why don't you kick us off? Oh, we're starting with the honorable. Yeah, yeah, we usually start with the honorable mention because it's like it's not really good enough. It, it's not on the list, so get the, get it out of the way. It was gonna be my big reveal. <laughs> it's my number one. <laughs> oh well, a lot of people like watch Mojo. They do honorable so, mentions like as oh, it was almost number one. Yeah, right. right. Which kind of I guess. Mine. This is my time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk during my time. <laughs> My honorable mention is the Unlock Escape games. Oh my god, I did forget about if those. Those are not co-op. I don't know what is. Um, the reason well, okay, go ahead. the reason it's my honorable mention is because they're they're so short and you can't play them again. But I freaking love them. I I did forget about those. You yeah, those, those are good. It's gonna be on keep. Well, no, uh, yeah. Now you you mean well you meant to put the exit games. Right? Exit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exit the game, the one where you have to be like. Wickedly autistic. Also, exit, not unlock. No, she meant unlock. Oh, oh <laughs> the exit okay. games are are. I I think I, I think liked they've been, one of them. I think they're like fifty fifty. They're really some of them are just really too hard. But. Yeah, like we did for the exit games, like the cabin one, which is the first one we ever did was really good, and then the other ones we did are just like, who thinks yeah. like this? Like there was one we had two friends over, and it was the Pharaoh one, and we were like, I I I bought it out, and I was just like. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this away. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> the unlock yeah. ones. I think we've only had one that we were like two that we were just and like this it was, is bad. Uh, squeak and no squeak. We really liked. No, I know because oh. oh, it was really no, easy. No, the the Tropicana one, the the uh, ice island of Doctor Groose. It's because we played with three and you needed even yeah. numbers. I've only played two of them. The first one was the squeak one, squeak and sausage. I played it with my girls. I uh -huh. loved it. Then I played the formula one. Yeah, and it sucked. that one sucked. Yeah, so then the I haven't one. played any more since. That then. was the one where you were on the submarine. No, the oh. chemistry one was an exit game. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't played any since. Yeah, it's so not we've but. done all of them except for there's a, th a set of three that were released mm -hmm. again. One of them is a sequel to the Squeak and Sausage. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And another one's uh, Wizard of Oz. That's a good one. I've heard that's the hardest one. Really? But they were saying on Dice Tower that the that's Wizard of Oz is the hardest one huh. that's come out. Huh? Okay. Just, just keep it going. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a good one. Um, my honorable mention is Mex vs. Minions. Um, Mex vs. Minions, I did a series on my channel, go check it out, it's, it's a lot of fun. That game is a blast, I haven't done a lot of programming games, but one, production quality is probably one of the best, if not the best game that's come out for a $70 price point. It's like, okay, Riot Games, you, uh, you, you definitely lost money, even though they probably bought like a bunch of copies sold, but damn. Um, for a first-time publisher, and they're probably never going to make another game, it's a really good one. So you have each mech, you know, and, and their tableau that you're just constantly, like, setting up to level up your mechs as well. Um, it's just so much fun. There is, like, I, one distinct story I remember was, for some reason, I just wasn't programming well. And so pretty much my guy was just kept going back and forth. 
in the same order, and like uh, Matt, who was playing with us, and Cat had to like get their max to like try, try and help push me. Mm-hmm. And then by the time they finally got to me, I fixed everything and I just shot yeah. off. And like they're just like, well, thanks. So the fact that there was a campaign and it was a simple campaign, all it did like the stack of cards that you d- drafted stayed the same. There weren't ever new ones, so you you got familiar and you're like, this is what I need to be better. But the damage cards increased and your special ability cards changed as well. So it was just a lot of fun. The reason it's an honorable mention is because since I've finished the campaign, I haven't played it again. Because that's the one I sold. That's the one you sold me, yeah. yeah. And it's still. I think I finally unshrinked it all, but I haven't played it. Right. I don't know why. Like it's it's a very like it's not like a campaign where it's like oh that's gonna be boring again because I can definitely bring it out for a bunch of other people mm-hmm. and they would have a blast with it. But yeah, just haven't touched it since. But it was it was awesome. It was a very fun campaign. All right, my honorable mention is probably gonna make your jaw hit the. Is a pandemic. It's a version of Pandemic. Oh, you're a. Uh, it's one? Pandemic the Cure. Oh, okay. It's the okay. dice version of Pandemic. Hmm. It's the. The reason I'm not I like shocked. it over I'm not shocked I like dice. List. I don't like Pandemic, <laughs> but if I can play Pandemic in 25 minutes and still I have a chance of winning, I'm good. That's fair. Okay. You know, like, like, uh, and what's cool about it is when you pick your role, you um, everybody has their own special set of dice. So when you're the scientist, oh, you okay. have they have their own faces, yeah, and stuff. So you roll the dice, and and what there's a, a plastic ring that sits out in the middle. That's what keeps track of your your outbreaks and oh, epidemics and all that stuff. Okay, and your bag is full of these really nice translucent colored dice, like they're okay. blue, yellow, green, red, mm-hmm. and you draw those out and put them in different continents. There's different continent deals in that you cure okay. them, put them in the middle, and then you have to get a certain jar, you know. There's there's ways to cure it. Okay. It's, it's the same mechanics. Like, so, if you played it with with it. Yeah. You so, know. you like the mechanics of Pandemic, so I still don't understand why you hate, like, regular Pandemic. Is it just the length of the game and, like, the fact that you can still lose? I, I don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I honestly can't tell you. I, okay. I don't. Okay, that's, I, that's uh, fine. I've... I've I owned Pandemic for the longest time. I never liked it. I kept it because I wanted to try it with my family. They didn't like it. And then I bought the dice version. Everybody mm-hmm. liked it, so I liked it, right. and it was all good. And then I mean, sometimes that's all that matters. Yeah. I, have, I have accepted your hate. I don't have the expansion for it, for it yet. There's experimental oh. meds or something like that that's a new It's a new, like, it. drug. Like, and yeah. also, I, when I say new, it's not new. It's probably like a year and a half, two years old the expansion. Yeah. But... but uh, it's a really cool game, and it plays so much faster. And if you like dice over cards, then that's that's your game. All righty, all right, babe. Number ten. Number ten is oh. Escape: Curse of the Temple. Oh, <laughs> for some reason I heard Escape, and I thought of Unlock, and I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and number nine is Unlock. <laughs> you just have all the different that's unlocks. Number one, Unlock. <laughs> um, <laughs> Escape, no, it's Curse Escape, Temple. Curse of the Temple. I've always liked that one. For some reason, you don't ever want to play it with me because I guess you hate me or something. But <laughs> you never I'm bring it up. It. I There's, do. You have never do. once you walked say, in here and you're like, hey, no. let's, babe, let's play one of your games. I know this is what you like to do. No. I'm always like, all what, right, we're playing another game. Is you ask me, what game should we play after we've played several? And I always want to bring Escape out, and you always say no. That is a lie. You always say that no. That is a lie. I don't it's bring because it up often. What I really but. need to do is just pull out like five games and be like, alright, what do you want to play from these five? <laughs> no, that is not true. You have not brought up playing Escape in a very have, long time. I have, but you time. have eight. In fact, I'm throwing it away You have after this. 400 games in this room. No, yeah. that's not even close to You three. have... It's probably with expansions. You have 29 games in this room <laughs> from, from 400 to <laughs> Okay. No, but I do like it. Um, but... I mean, I do, I do distinctly remember asking to play it sometimes, and you're like, you just never mix it to the table. And I'm like, oh! <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not saying you're completely wrong. I just don't remember the last time you brought it up. Why do you like it? It's because I've given up. Because I like the, because it's a challenge. It is. Yeah. It's also extremely stressful. Yeah, when but, you're like, sitting... but it's fun, because you get to listen to the music, and it's just, it pumps you up. Yeah. And I, I like Indiana Jones. So. It's also really funny whenever, if you take anything, like, that you say during, like, a game like that out of context, you sound like like a complete idiot. It's like, oh my, oh, yep, okay, I rolled four blacks. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, like, yeah. it's only ten minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you only have short. ten minutes to you play, play yep. multiple games, and I mean, I've never played it, but yeah, I like that one. I I was never interested in the zombie one, no, just because no. I'm I'm tired of zombies. There's a zombie one, by the way, um, 
and they have a big box for it, which I think just comes with all the expansions. Um, the curses are a lot of fun too. It comes with the own grand zombie. Yep. Well, I'm, yeah. what? Yeah, it's, it that's why it's so big. Zombie. Yeah, it comes with your own zombie. I was talking about big box for the curse of the temple. Oh, but I was anyway. talking about the zombie. No, nope. nope. Alrighty. <laughs> Let's just move on to your guys' <laughs> weirdo statement. It just uh, comes with zombies, everything. My number 10 is not going to be on your list, and I don't even know if you've played it. Um, is Robinson Crusoe. Oh, my favorite. Your favorite game. Have you played it? Once. Okay. So, Robinson I Crusoe. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I think you just hate hard games. No, I, I think that's, I think I that's what that is. Games. <laughs> but, oh, but you, you love Spartacus. <laughs> I love Spartacus. <laughs> You're brain dead. <laughs> uh, never mind. I was going to make a joke, but it'd be in bad taste. Uh, Robinson Crusoe is a fantastic cooperative game because it's an actual solid cooperative game. Um, one of my favorite mechanics in it, and I've just been on many, many lists, um, is the fact that as you go... Uh, exploring or you have an adventure, you have a choice of like you can get a temporary bonus right now. Quit yawning! Ah! You just got off of work and you immediately made me do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. You should have known. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm sure Brad, well, I'm not as surprised Brad was even here. I was like, I'm sure the boys are tired by now. They've been no. doing since 9 no. a.m. 9.30. Anyway, Robinson Crusoe, when you go to explore, you can get a bonus, but then the, the event is going to come back. Um, later, or potentially come back later, because you just start adding more to this action deck or this event deck that you have to draw. I love that. One, the game is extremely thematic. The scenarios are a lot of fun, except for Jenny. Save Jenny. Jenny can die on that fucking rock. Stay Useless bitch. Just tell me they have a uh, volleyball with a handprint on it. Well said. And I might. <laughs> no, I don't and know. I might play <laughs> if that was an item, that would, I wish they did. They'd probably well get sued. Said. <laughs> Oh, right, morale goes up every time you have it. Yeah. That'd be for that'd be fun. No, they have a lot of cool scenarios. One of them in so they did a second edition, which it cleaned up the rule book because it's a oh it's Z-Man games. It's a terrible rule book. Um, I, I think it's just a second. Portal done it. and Z-Man and Strong so I think Portal has it again. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they yeah anyway increase the rule book and then also. Added scenarios, fan-made scenarios, so one of them is King Kong, so you're on Skull mm. Island. Uh, the expansion is fantastic, Voyage of the Beagle, where you're actually working with Charles Darwin, and that is kind of a semi-campaign thing. We were doing it, and then it's been like four years since we've played it, so I was just like, oh, we're just going to start over, I don't even remember. But yeah, I love the fact that, you know, you have your workers, which are discs, that you can either go by yourself and roll dice and risk, or you can like ensure it succeeds by sending more people to go do it. Um, and the scenarios are a lot of fun and, you know, a huge variety. Um, it is only at number 10 because, one, there's just better call games out there. <laughs> so, but I'll never get rid of it. I need to pull the trigger and just get the upgraded version just because... Don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just for, because, like, the, the tokens are no longer cubes. They're, like, bananas. Yeah. Or, like, food is actual, like, banana. It's real bananas. It's real bananas, yeah. You have to buy a new game every week. Because they go bad. Or you can just buy new bananas every week. No, you need to get the game <laughs> bananas. <laughs> the game Yeah, bananas. they're better. It's like it's like Walmart. Everything's better at Walmart. Everything's better. Name brand is always better. First of all, everything's better at Target. So. Everything's better at Aldi. Go. What's your number 10? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Top right. 10 grocery stores. <laughs> number 10 uh, would have been a lot higher on my list a couple years ago. Um, it's kind of fallen off because... There's been better games come out. And then it's Dead of Winter. Um, I'm sure it'll be on, if not one, both of you guys' lists at some point. Who knows? Um, but, uh, you know. How many zombie, times have we talked about that game? I know. For every, uh, zombie survival, but it's not really about the zombies. It's more about how, you know, the, the people, and then there's the hidden traitors, so you don't know if people. Yeah, like, people are shady because they have their own personal objectives which makes them look guilty um, you know it's so weird i believe there's been another game i can't think of it that added that secret objective thing and we hated it really? like we didn't like the fact that i don't know I, I i'm probably pulling that out of my ass but i feel like that was a recent issue with another game where it was something. like it was like something like it was a game that was like cooperative but it didn't like it didn't need to be competitive, right, so right. I don't know. Dead of Winter just somehow made it work. The the thing about that game, like if it was just that, it wouldn't be a great game. But the crossroad yeah. mechanic is what makes that game good. Mm. Um, 
and obviously they have the space ones getting ready to come out now. Gen seven. You know how much that um, is? I, it is a hundred bucks. Really? That game is a hundred dollars. I've been making it for freaking eight years. <laughs> Better be a lot of stuff to it. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it, I mean, I, I, there isn't really much more to say. You right. Know? I mean, I, I've pimped out my copy where I have the blood splatter dice. Oh, um, nice. So they're like did you, they're do like you frosty have the and I expansion. Got, no. Did you get the long I night? I did have I did have a long night and I got rid of it because really? I I just like the base game. Hmm. And but what I I got the frosty blue ice dice and then I splattered red paint oh, really that's lightly cool. on them so like blood sprayed dice. That's cool. So they're pretty cool and yep. All right, all right. Number nine. Number eight. Number nine. <laughs> yeah, number nine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, number nine is Black Orchestra. Wow. 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 Oh, I figured that'd be higher on your list. You haven't played Black Orchestra, have you? Well, I guess you just don't know. because you're a Nazi supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's America. You're like, I fit. Oh, I fit right in. <laughs> you, you, we, we are. Anyway, I'm not going to tell people where we live in case they come burn my house down. <laughs> All right. Black Orchestra. I like Black Orchestra because Hitler's bad. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a good reason to like the like game. I should be holding up a paper. I'm in like fifth grade. Like, Hitler is <laughs> wrong. And like, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so I read Mein Kampf and I, Hitler's bad. I read it all in German. <laughs> I'm a fifth grader. I'm pretty sure there's an English translation. No, no, That's a thick book, by just, the way. Yep. Um, I only know because I worked at a bookstore. I didn't, I didn't order it and read okay. it. I'd like to, though. It's probably good. It there's probably, probably some good parts. It's probably interesting. Um, anyway, I like it because it. I like it because one, it's a fun game and it's it's a cool theme theoretically, getting a second chance to kill Hitler. Um, but I really like it because the characters in the game are actually like real people, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's I think that's a pretty cool way to remember people who tried to kill someone. That is true. That is true. They fed the box. <laughs> They're real time. It's their the ashes. Box. It's in the box. box. What's in the box? <laughs> I do that every single I unboxing. And you're like, I know, it's fucking annoying. So I'm like, I know who it is. So okay. My, that's my number four. Good, <laughs> good choice at number nine. My number nine is the only pandemic game I have on here. Um, I am, Brad, you'll be proud of me, uh, at the point where I'm fucking tired of pandemic. Uh, but it is Pandemic Iberia. Uh, I have I have the base pandemic. I was like, where is it? I do have regular Pandemic, um, and I do like all of the expansions, um, but Iberia just was, I felt like, was way more thematic, and it was different enough uh, that I, I really enjoyed. So you're in the Iberian Peninsula in, I think, the 18th century. Um, so uh, the actions that you can take, you can build rail railroads, which will, you know, increase your movement speed, and instead you're not curing diseases, you're just discovering them. Uh, and within the box, one, the artwork, I think, for the cards and for, like, the backs is really nice. Um, and I don't know what it is. I just like that old-timey feeling. It doesn't feel, it's like, it's not modern, obviously, like the rest of them. And the, the it came with kind of some expansions within it. Like, you can actually change up the, how the virus is actually have special abilities and stuff like that. You can do the same in the expansions for the regular one. But... I don't know. I, I just, I like that theme within it, and it did something better than Cthulhu, even though, which is weird, because I really love almost everything Cthulhu, but that one was just, I don't know, we, we played both of them. I've done, I've done every pandemic besides The Cure on the channel, um, and afterwards, because we played the Cthulhu one, uh, Kat and I did, and we really liked it the first time we played it for the channel, and we were like, there's something, we don't really like this one anymore. Uh... No, sorry, I haven't done Rising Tide for the channel, because it was garbage, and I was like, I didn't even want to edit it, because her and I played it, and we were just like, I, I can't do this anymore. It's such a stretch. <laughs> like, it was like, r r I understand the water thing, just come on, really? Really? <laughs> so, Iberia, and I, still, I haven't played them in, in quite a bit, I think since they've been on the channel, but I don't know, Pandemic has been like the epitome of cooperative. It's one of the few that came out that it was like, wow, this is new. And it does have that problem of, if I'm more experienced, pretty much just listen to me. Because uh, there's really only one right way to do things. So, that's my number nine, Pandemic of Alright, my number nine, I did not expect to like as much as I did. It's a game that came out this year. Oh, based, okay. Based on an IP. Um, I almost, when I first saw the game, I almost thought it was a mass market game. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Okay. Any guesses real quick? You played no. it? Have I played it? Nope. Do I, do I have it? We both have played it. Oh, dear. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I can't make it. You don't own it. I don't own it? No. Do we play it at your house? Yep. <clears throat> oh, shit. Is Thanos? Uh, Thanos Rising. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, it's a little more Wow. Thanos. It is almost like a mass market game. <laughs> that's what I thought, because, yeah. you know, when you see U.S. Opoly. Yeah, it's I mean, kind of. like, I mean, I know they've kind of had huh. the Harry Potter game, which I enjoy, and the stuff like that. But, yeah. But uh, Thanos Rising, to me, just, like, just really was awesome. I didn't you know, even think about that. I because, forgot about that. Yeah, I uh, have been on your list. No. I got the promos <laughs> for it, which lets you make Thor your... One of your starting characters at the beginning. It's a promo oh, thing. Oh, I see. I Thor? Got from Gen Con, yeah. Oh, he, okay, yeah, he's not. He's, <laughs> yeah, he not, a guy. he's not a person. Okay. It was, you know, Stephen Strange, mm -hmm. Captain America, Black Panther, and uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, you said the girl from, the girl from uh, uh, Gamora. Guardians. Gamora. Gamora. Ah. Those are the ones you start with. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, it's a dice chucker. It's a simple little game. It's, it's a tough cooperative game because. I mean, some you you can beat it really quick one time, and then it's just gonna kick you in the ass the next time. Yeah, um, it's super easy to learn. It's just roll dice, do yes, this, roll much. dice, do this. But it's everybody I've played it with. I'm assuming has really enjoyed it when we played it. I know she liked it. <clears throat> um, I thought it was okay. Yeah, like I'd play it again. Um, and you, we were playing on the easiest Maybe. level. Oh, were we really? Oh, yeah, the very easy. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. And that was the first me. time I ever beat it. Was that time when you Damn. guys remember? And that was the easiest. There's, there's ramped yeah. up two more levels. I know? mean, with games like that, it kind of reminds me of Oh, Ghost Stories was another one that could have been on your list. Yeah, it's a ninja one. Oh, uh, yeah. is games like that whenever they have the tiers of difficulty, mm -hmm. it's almost like a fake like leveling system because like there's no strategy to. Like, right. you know, okay, well, we beat on easy because, you know, it's the, the, the no, cards come out a certain way. Monsters. Yeah. Oh, okay. you add more monsters. Too. Yeah. you have to beat but since eight or eight, seven yeah. monsters and then one, and it's like nine and 11. I yeah. Think, or something, something like that. So, yeah, but anyway, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful game. I, the Thanos thing is, is cool. Yeah, they I put like it that. out at a perfect time because it got, you know, with Infinity War coming out. Mm -hmm. It has everybody from Infinity War. That's probably War. what helped sell it. But then when I think that, yeah, people were buying it. But then I think it was backed up with good game. You know, it's a simplistic mm -hmm. game, but it's yeah. still a very. They could have put any theme on it, even. I mean, they could have. Yeah. They could have put another theme where there's something in the middle causing damage, mm -hmm. and puts other cards. But it just works with. And and the coolest part about it, even though it's a deal, is that is that big gauntlet that's out there, and, you ha and it has those clear plastic cube or uh, gems. Oh every time yeah. Open, you put the gems in the deal, and that would make him even more powerful. Yeah. So It's. You know, that's my number nine, okay. and it's it's probably going to be a solid there, maybe even up more. Really? Quite okay. Quite okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I completely forgot. That wouldn't have made my list just because of the sheer randomness. It's like, yeah. because of how, no matter how well you do, like, there's really, I guess that's pandemic too, but I don't know, I feel like I have more control in other co-ops, but yeah. All right, cool, cool. Number eight? Number eight. Number eight is, I can't think of a joke. Black Orchestra. <laughs> Five minute dungeon. <laughs> I didn't put that on my list. <laughs> oh, what? I still haven't played mine. A lot. Do you have it? Yeah. Five I'm minute dungeon. Flawed. I think it's a fun game. It's literally only five minutes to get through one dungeon. It's chaos, but it's the good kind of chaos. I have never had that game fail. Like I even brought it to like a work game game day, and they and the people playing exactly. had fun and like. They only like like stupid games like Million Dollars Butt and like uh, uh, Cards Against Blender, Humanity and Blender. Kittens in a Blender. None of them are bad games. They're great party games. But Five Minute Dungeon was like the gamer game that I finally yeah. bought and uh, brought, and it it is a lot of fun. First of all, if you don't have it, uh, like one get it. But also, you have to get the app. Like the app is just yeah. a glorified timer, but it has Eric Bailey, the voice of the uh, um. Honest trailers yeah. and stuff like that, and it is just so funny. I did it for the channel, so go check it out. Um, and did we play? We played it when uh, our friends came up, right? And we finally beat the we beat it. We beat every boss. I think yeah. And I backed it on Kickstarter, so it's going to come with an expansion, and I'm getting the Kickstarter. So like, there's actually a sixth boss, sixth, <laughs> sixth boss, uh, which is my final form, and so it's the final. But yes, it just adds more and more cards. Um, what I do like, though, since it's not on my, I can, I can rave this, about it. Is this my? You just, you said like five things, and then you're like, I like it because it's five minutes, now and then you stop talking. <laughs> it's, just, it's my 
All right, so keep going. What was it? That was it. You took See, you said that was it. You did yours. That's the whole point. That's no, whole point. I, we comment. Uh, do we need a talking pillow? <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the fucking mouth. <laughs> then, you'll, um, then you'll really be limited. <laughs> um, so, five minute dungeon. I'm going to continue. Sounds like a fun game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> ten um, out of ten. Is they added artwork, even though you never have the time to see it. Yeah, you just throw things. You just, you're just throwing cards around. But, all right, good. Good, good. I thought there was artwork. There is artwork, but they didn't have to because you don't ever get to look at it. Oh. Like, they could have fast. just put the symbols on, but they actually put in the work for it, so that's a good choice. My number eight is, already been mentioned by Brad. Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter. <laughs> uh, Dead of Winter, as, as, I mean, pretty much everything he said, uh, the Gen 7 will probably knock Dead of Winter off if they do the same thing, just better. If I mean, for $100, it better be a damn good game. Um... Yeah, the crossroads mechanic has never been done anywhere, and that just keeps that game fresh. I would recommend The Long Night, just for more crossroads cards, and uh, the versatility of, you know, there's... One, it's just not aesthetically nice. There's a graveyard, so every character that dies just goes over there. It does nothing else, except maybe they... I don't know if maybe they can come back, but... They're worthless to me. I just throw them in the box. Really? <laughs> you fuckers! Yeah. I just like looking at it and be like, oh man, you guys remember Karen... Yeah, yeah, I remember when she tried to, you know, steal <laughs> steal money from me, and uh, I shot her in the face. That was just in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was even before the dish. I just killed her. She's dead. <laughs> uh, but then they have the, the lab where they have, like, different, you know, creatures, like, and zombies have special abilities. Um, so it just adds more uh, to a game that's already great. But everything that he said, uh, it just, it's, it's fantastic. And I can't wait for it. Is this, it's, it's a, is it the same company doing the Gen 7? Is it Plaid it's, Hat? It's Plaid Hat, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, cool, cool. Well, that was my number eight. All right, my number eight is another USAopoly game. Hogwarts. Yep. Yeah. Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battle. We I am that. not a Harry Potter fan at all. <laughs> I could give two what? swats about Harry Potter, but I bought, I like deck, deck builders, and uh, I got the game, and I played it with a coworker. So who loves Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and her enjoyment was whenever I'm playing these cards that say the spells, I say them wrong. <laughs> and she's all like, um, actually, <laughs> it's <laughs> Leviosa. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're like, back <laughs> But anyway, um, but I, I, it's almost, it's, it, I, it's not a legacy game, but it is. It has boxes, mm -hmm. and then as you, and each box is a book, so one through seven. Have you played it? We played it at uh, the Comic Con, oh, okay. um, and we played just the book one, and we thought it was extremely underwhelming. Book one, <laughs> book one, two, and three are building up. Once you get to book four, it adds more dice in the box, and then there's more oh, cards, okay. and it really ramps up. Yeah, like when you get to probably about six or seven. It so would you recommend just like whenever you get the game, just combine the three books? And just don't even fucking play the three. You, right? I mean. It's that I they did it that way because it's a USA Opoly game for one, so it needs to be simple because it's a mass market oh. almost for people that may not know what deck builders are. I think they start off slow, you know, and go. Mm -hmm. And then I bought the Monsters uh, expansion. Oh, yeah, it did have an expansion. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Monsters something or Force Monsters. Fantastic Beasts and World whatever. Garden. But anyway, it's it's got another character you can play in it, but it is almost unbeatable. Who's the character? Yeah, like another good. Oh, Luna. Luna. Yeah. Luna look good. But anyway, it Luna almost takes me good. It whatever. almost makes it unbeatable. Really? That expand. I mean, it is tough. Wow. So, I mean, and I, as much as I love deck builders, and it was another one that, mm -hmm. you know, and my girls like it and stuff, so. The thing one. for that one, one, I've, I only played the, the first book, and we were just like, okay. <laughs> You're not uh, a deck builder fan, huh? though. You weren't. I, that one yeah, I'm slowly coming around, right, right. Uh, which is weird. I don't know what's happening to me. <laughs> uh, was I just. I really, I'm not a huge fan of like stock art anyway, like from the movies. Right, right. Battlestar, you know, did it pretty, pretty well. I just really, really hate how they have seventh book or seventh movie art for book one. Oh, like, okay. if they if they were getting the shots, if they if they had the rights, I don't see why they well, didn't. Some of the cards do. actually change as you go. Like do they? Your kid card that you control. Yeah, and it, and it changes. Like at least they did that. Book, when you go into book four, it becomes like the book. The, 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 the teenager. They had long shadows. Like the 18 year old. You know, yeah. it's like the card. And some At of least the cards they did that. You did some cards and hug and. Yeah. And yeah, I do stuff. remember they did have like movie one for your characters. I just wish, like, because right. one of the villains in book one, spoilers, I guess, is Malfoy. But it's seventh movie Malfoy. It's like, you could have just had him as kid Malfoy. 
I don't know. It maybe, just would maybe, maybe there's like an archive issue, and they're like, we don't want to dig that deep. <laughs> maybe. It's maybe. just, it's just, it's really cool though. I mean, it's it's legacy light, and it's a deck builder, and yeah, you know, it's 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 fun. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to give you shit for any of those yet. Yes. Number seven. Just wait. I have no idea what's on your list, actually. By the way, this is the second time. I don't think so. Uh, we usually agree pretty much on co-ops except for Pandemic. Uh, by the way, I've actually done this list before. We did it with Luke like I four years it. ago. Did you watch it? I remember what her number one was. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so go watch that. Um, I do not know what I put down. I can guarantee you probably eight of these games. I'm pretty sure Robinson Caruso was the only one that carried over. Uh, I know a lot of mine probably. Well, a couple of mine carried over. Okay, I so. Think, I don't know. What's your number seven? One did. It's uh, Stuffed Fables. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's going to be on your list or not. Yeah, it is, because I like it. It is only supposed to be like a kid's game, and mm -hmm. we're playing it as adults, but it's it's cute. <clears throat> it's fun. Well, how many people we've offended by playing? Because it's a series so, we're doing on the channel. On the yeah. List. So, you know, we're, we've done, I've uploaded maybe two episodes of it. It is not for children. I, I have not even wanted to touch it because I didn't like Mice and Mystics. It's different. I know, I yeah. assume, but I just... I think if you, if your yeah. girls didn't like Mice and Mystics, they're not going to like Stuff Fables. Yeah. If they were younger, maybe. Yeah, they would, but they're, they're right at the age where they're not going to like that. Mm -hmm. um, they might way, way, way later, but yeah. I, I like it because um, it's just wholesome. It's cute. I painted the minis for it. She did. She did a really good job. Thank you. It's so pure, and our evil black hearts have twisted and it. And we ruin it every chance we can get. It, no, that is a, that is a really good one. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know if you you don't tell me, but if you put my Mystics also on there, but um, stuff fables is a lot of fun, and I think if you do have younger kids, that can definitely ease them into the genre because uh, the first one is like. Uh, you know, the girl is, like, going to bed in, like, her first, like, big bed, and, like, her blanket gets stolen, and, yeah, it gets, like, ripped. Spoilers, I guess, because it's story-based, which is also really fun, mm -hmm. um, which can change, kind of, it's, it is campaign-based, but yeah. the, the blanket gets taken underneath, and then some demonic world underneath her bed. It's a lot of fun, and it's really nice to have the painted minis, so, good choice, good choice. Yeah, and I mean, like, I have a little more to say about it, but I also, we haven't even done the discussion for it yet, so I don't really want to say too much, so. That's fair, that's fair. Okay, we're on seven, right? Um, My yeah. number seven is Eldritch Horror. Um, for some reason, I accidentally put a different game, and I was like, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> Eldritch Horror is my number seven. Uh, uh, spoilers, I guess, Arkham Horror is not on this list. Fuck um, I'm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, first of all, I've played Eldritch Horror more recently, and it's become... At this point, I had to look at them objectively instead of... Because Arkham was the second game I got. I think it was like one of the first games you and I played together. Um, and don't get me wrong, I still love Arkham Horror, but if I'm going to play one of the two Eldritch... Like, especially with new people, Eldritch is going to be the one because it's just more streamlined. Now, I love both for different reasons. In all honesty, Arkham could have replaced it. Just how I'm feeling. Um, I just like Eldritch's streamlined gameplay and the fact that, like... There, there is more theme, and I love how they were like, we're, we're going to keep it civil with expansions. And there's like ten other expansions so, going out. Not to jump in on this, but what happens when Arkham 3rd Edition yeah. comes out? Uh, mm -hmm. that, and it because... I'm gonna, I am going to get it. <laughs> so is it going to be... Are they going to take what they learned from Eldritch and make it more... It seems like they actually have a modular board really? uh, with 3rd Edition. I haven't looked too much into it, but it seems more... <laughs> It does seem more streamlined, and they probably will take things that, okay, well, Eldritch is still kind of clunky here, mm -hmm. but it looks like you actually, like, explore. You're not given right. a board, and this is what you get. That'll it's much. I, I, I'm getting it strictly for that, and what I'm hoping is if they kind of keep, they do Arkham and streamline Arkham, but with, you know, new mechanics like right. the modular board and stuff right. like that. That would be amazing. Um, now, what happens with my Arkham stuff, I don't know. That's the thing that kind of bumps me out. I, why is it third edition? Was there an original Arkham and then that in yeah, the fan? Yeah, I didn't the second. I think. Wow, I didn't even I didn't know that was the second edition. Yeah. So yes, I am gonna I get it. So. Um, but Elders is it's very thematic. It's I mean, so much you know, fun. The cut the the <laughs> the. I mean, I don't really care for like the monsters. That's why I like Arkham sometimes above. Is because monsters actually affect what happens. They're not just there. But it's because it's the world. I like the set of boards, which you can have adventures and and stuff like that to go on. 
It's just, it's just fun. I've never had it fail. Last time we played that, we had a coworker of mine. He literally failed every single roll, and we, and I was like, "Why are you here?" <laughs> like he, and I asked him, "Like, do you even like this game?" He's like, "Oh, I love it." He just, had, he yeah. rolled so bad on everything. Um, at this point, there's a bunch. I like the Mythos deck with Eldritch. How each monster has their own one clues that pertain to them and their own mysteries that pertain to them and they have their own mythos deck build uh, instead of just having like a stack of yeah. mythos cards. So I really like that. Um, I really don't care for either one of them. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean in Arkham especially. I played one game of Arkham and it lasted for flipping ever. We originally yeah. were going to do it on my channel yeah. and I took, we had like six players, took about six hours. And we had all the expansions. Yeah. And we did yeah. every no expansion. Yeah, we had every That is true. Expansion. So it did take a long time and I didn't even put it up because I was like, we probably won, fucked up, and people were people were leaving and during the discussion my friends kept falling asleep and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick an expansion and do the game whenever I do it. I think there are at least two or three uh, Lovecraft games that are better than those two. Um, I, I definitely know one. <laughs> um, I can't think of your other one, though. Uh, so that's my number seven, Elder Torque. All right, my number seven is a moldy oldie. It's a moldy oldie. Moldy oldie. It's, um... And I don't think you have it anymore. Do oh, I must you have it. I don't know. I don't, I don't we'll find out. It. We'll find out when you say Defenders of the Realm. No, I don't have it anymore. Yes. Defenders of the Realm, another one that uses Pandemic. It does. It deals, yes. Um, <laughs> and I played it recently, too, before I sold it, because yeah. I was like, okay, maybe I do want to keep this. Yeah. Uh, I did end up getting rid of it, but I was like, because you said it wasn't like Pandemic, right. and we played it again, and, and, and I'm it like, has the it The only is. thing that's the same is the explosions. No, the, uh... I mean, that's, that's... The, uh, there was something else about it. Oh, the, the card system is the yeah, same way. right. It, it's, it's, um, one of my earliest gaming experiences... When I stopped, once I got really into the hobby, mm -hmm. um, I had all the stuff for it. Um, it was just it was just awesome to get three other people down to the table. Mm -hmm. your, you know, you have all these races to choose from. There's so so much variance in them. The like Eagle Rider, yeah, you know, and just I mean, just all these. Different, I did like the unorthodox right. classes. They, they they had so many different stuff. Like you you know you think D and D, there's barbarian wizard, mm. you know, but this had all these really cool stuff. Um, with cool abilities, and it was pretty much you're just protecting the the center, trying to do quests, kill yeah. the three main uh, warlords. Did you ever, guys? Did you ever play the dragon expansion? I had it, but I never played so it. So we heard it was did. Harder than hell. We did, <laughs> and uh, yes, it is very hard. I can't remember if we won. We played it with Devin. Do you remember if we won? I don't remember. I feel like we did, but like that could just be my mind no, I like think we repressing did. The, the difficulty. I can't remember it, honestly, but I, I, feel, I, think, I feel like we did. I feel too. like we did too, but yeah, it was it was very hard. Um, I kicked myself for getting rid of it just because I had so many co-op games at this one time and I kind of got rid of it. I wish I had it back. Um, I'd be surprised if they wouldn't make a reprint. Yeah. A reprint would definitely... Well, they did the Defenders of the Last Stand. Yeah, Which wasn't yeah, that the same thing that but post well. I bought that. Okay. I kickstarted that one. Um it was it was good. It had it had some it was a little more story mm -hmm. driven. Um I it you know if That's I was gonna play that kind of a game I'd probably just soon stay with with uh Defenders oh, okay. of the Realm. Yeah, the, yeah. I I don't remember I think I, I think I just got rid of it because it took forever to hit the shelves and mm -hmm. um I just have other co-op games yeah. out there, but that, that, is, that is a very good one. What are we on? Six? Number six! Number six! Mysterium! Mysterium! Why? Another one I haven't played. So, yeah, so the reason I like Mysterium is because I, I like, I like, um, not only do I like co-op games, um, I like mystery games a lot. Like, I like anything, um, even remotely where it's like... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um, but it, I like how just one person it has to be really mad and frustrated the whole game <laughs> and the rest of us have to be completely clueless for the rest of it as well and like it's just it's just so obscure and um I don't know I just think it's really cool it really makes you think and then it really makes you think like what uh, somebody else was thinking as well like <laughs> it is a good one that's another game that has never failed uh, since I brought it to the table if you don't know 
if you guys don't know, uh, Mysterium is one person plays a ghost and they have cards, you know, pers uh, the, the person playing the ghost has been killed and he's trying and he can't talk and has to give clues through these like Dixit-like cards, these very obscure but beautiful artwork cards. Um, and he has certain ones for each player, each medium, and it's so much fun. It's, it's fun on both sides. I, I like being the ghost though, but I think very, I, you have to know the ghost. Like, it's like, okay, why would he give me this card? Okay, there's a bunch of red. This victim has a bunch of red, and, like, really on the card there was a knight, and there's, and it's like, so I'm gonna guess it's the, it's that person, and you're just like... <laughs> why would you guess it's that person? And, uh, I don't think we've ever done it to where if you guys don't make it, you lose. I don't know. Just because I don't like that rule. If they don't technically make it by the time the time runs out, they the ghost loses, or everyone loses, but that is a lot of fun. Not on my list. But, because, because, uh, I guess so. It's like, please find my killer. Uh, I have all the time in the world now. All right. So my number, we're on number six. Yeah. yeah. My number six is a game that I know you haven't played. She has. It's on the channel. Uh, this war of mine. Um, this war of mine is absolutely fantastic. I love everything about it. Um. <clears throat> this War of Mine is actually from an acclaimed video game where you play, like, civilians in a war, uh, not actually fighting the war, so you're devastated, like, you're, you're affected by what's going on, which is, one, unique, and, two, um, it's just extremely thematic. I love the fact that you're, you're in a house and you're trying to get resources to build it up and survive everything that can happen. I love the phases. Um, one thing I d the reason why it's not as high on my list, even though, is because it were, I think it was made to be solo. Because you have your journal book. And what they did, which was I like, but me personally I also don't like, is they wanted it to be, you open the box, you set it up, play. Like, you don't have to sit and read a 30-page rule book. Just figure it out. Here's your journal. This tells you what you can do. Over time, as you go through the storybook, there are rules. Like, extra rules of things. Oh, I didn't know I can do that. Personally, I don't like that, but um, I can see why others would. Um, but you have your journal that is like, okay, well, I'm going to start, so I do the day actions. I pass it to you. You do the, the you know, evening actions. You pass it to her, and she does it. So you kind of, no one controls a character. You all control these characters, and they can get, you know, fatigued. They can get hungry. They can get depressed. And over time, you're trying to manage all these guys, and if they die, then other people become depressed, or then they have epilogues based on how they left and stuff like that. And... If you, I mean, I can see some people not liking this because it can be depressing, but I'm able to separate, you know, fact from, or like, fiction from uh, right. reality. It's like, I understand this is a game, I understand it's based on probably, you know, a bunch of real life stories and things people had to do, I get that, but it's a game. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I love the stories, I love you can play, okay, well... What would this character do? Let's be thematic. You see kids and they hide their stash of food and they run off after something. Do you steal their food knowing right. that they're going to die? Stuff like that. It's it's fantastic. Uh, the save mechanism is awesome. I love the exploration of going out at night, picking a location and having encounters there. I'm in a current game right now where we heard of a story of some, like, kid that was picked on and I was going around murdering people and we like kept investigating and now we have a chance of like something happening during the very like the dusk phase and he could show up and it's like hey <laughs> so I, I don't know what's gonna happen um they're making an expansion for it and I cannot wait um so that's that's this war of mine all right I think I, I definitely think you would like it just well, for the solo I aspect I haven't ever messed with it right yeah uh, number six, this is my first Cthulhu game. Okay. On there. Okay. I, I definitely know what one of them is. Um, mine is, this one is Elder Sign. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> the dice chucking version of kind of like the whole Arkham mm -hmm. stuff. I forgot Elder Sign. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, it uses like the Yahtzee mechanic with your dice, you're trying to, you're monsters, solve air, finding clues, overall trying to go through solving mysteries. Now, base game alone, average. Um, the first expansion is okay. 
and then every expansion after that, so the Gates of Arkham was good, I had more stuff for that, but then there was the uh, Ice one, oh, of Ice, yeah. I think, is where they started bringing more story elements into it and making it more of a story-driven um, dice-checking game. I mean, mm -hmm. the first the first couple expansions and deal, you were pretty much in or around the museum. Yeah, um, you have played that. The, the, then there's an Omens of Ice where you're like in Antarctica, and then there's an Omens of the Sea, or Deep, where you're out on the ocean on So the they kind of started doing Eldritch Yeah, and stuff. then there's okay. the Pharaoh one that you're in Egypt and stuff, and you're... So then there's all these thematic things that happen, and there's all new decks, and, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. a lot more story-driven and a lot more thematic. Yeah, you know, like, I think those expansions would take it off games, because right, right. I did not like the base um, game at all. And then I know this is silly, but this game jacks up higher because it finally got a dang organizing kit oh. for it. Because <laughs> oh, it came yeah. in one of those small fantasy flight boxes uh, for the longest like, time. Kind of like Battle for Roku. And, and there's six, six, one. four, five, there's five expansions for it. None of it would fit in the box. And they find, and Broken Token finally came out with this big ass wooden crate that take, you get rid of all the other boxes, everything goes in that and it looks like a museum. It's wood etched. And yeah. You like lift the lid up and it holds everything in there. It's perfect. So... Now I'm actually playing it more because <laughs> it's easier. Oh to yeah, get out like that's that's how Gloomhaven for me got played way right, more. Right. Cause like Broken Token <laughs> saves games. Right. So um, but yeah, and I should have brought it tonight. But but uh, but yeah, Elder Sign, excellent game, especially if you get those the last three expansions are mm -hmm. the best ones. Yeah, yeah, I think because I do want to try it with those expansions. I still don't think I would buy it. But I definitely think it, I would like it just mm -hmm. with the story because the other the base game was just. Okay, I guess I have this now, and all right, I used it, and like there wasn't really like a lot of like weight to anything you did. Right. Um, all right, number five. <laughs> I scared the cat. <laughs> um, number five is Sherlock. I thought that'd be higher. Holmes. Okay. Mr. Holmes. Which one? The Jack the Ripper one? No. <laughs> nope. Just the normal Sherlock games. Eat again. It, it bounces off of. Um, the mystery theme. I like trying to solve things. I may not necessarily be as smart as Sherlock Holmes, but no one is that <laughs> freaking opium addict. Maybe if we heroin. Just, maybe if we do know it was opium. What well, was heroin? It it is an opioid. It was an addict. <laughs> <laughs> it matters. <laughs> it was methamphetamine. <laughs> what? Some drugs are okay. Um, it was a gateway drug. <laughs> Um, no, I like it just because it keeps with the mystery theme. I like trying to solve something. I like seeing, like, what we can catch and, and being rewarded for it. Um, and then just being embarrassed. That's also not on my list. I, it, it probably should have been. Because I don't think we've ever, ever had a story that we didn't like. Right. Except the Jack the Ripper campaign wasn't, wasn't that fun. Yeah. Uh, that well, was just, yeah. He yeah. wasn't a fun guy, so. <laughs> well, I don't know, because... It seemed cool, but it's like he he wasn't caught, so right. you really you're just grasping at straws for just theories. Which is how they felt too. I'm talking about like the the actual answers. They were just like, oh, the, most people uh, think he was left-handed. It's like no one fucking knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes is is a lot of fun. Uh, Josh really likes likes them too. Stinky. Sherlock Holmes. Hmm, I don't know if you would like them. Do you like feeling like an idiot the entire time? <laughs> no, not the entire time, just at the end. Just the yeah, because what it is is like, I you, you have right. to answer questions at the end of the scenario, but you have really no time limit. Yeah. Uh, so you're like, I think we know, and then you go back and you go through the questions and you're like, we didn't catch any of this. Yeah. And you're I've, I've probably like played that. a simplified version of that. Okay. Have you ever played Witness? No, but I've heard of it. Where you, yeah, it's it's just a tiny little book. And yeah, you have to whisper to a couple people. That's different right. Stuff, and then and then you have to guess these questions, and it sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you kind of if you like that, then you would like. It wasn't bad. Yeah. You would like Sherlock. Uh, there's another one that's kind of like it that I might like more than Sherlock is Mythos Tales. It's Cthulhu yeah. Sherlock, so it's it's centered around that lore. But they do something where everything you do actually moves you on like a like a tracker so you actually have limited time to, so each like lead uh, goes down on the marker instead of you just taking it up i did like that you had to be kind of more smart about what you wanted to do and plus it's cthulhu mm -hmm. but sherlock holmes is is a really good one uh, i have all of them over there too uh so my number five 
has been mentioned already and it's on Kat's list. Oh. Can you guess what it is? It's already been on my list. It, you have already said Black it. Black Orchestra? Black Orchestra is my yeah. number five. Yeah. Uh, everything she said, uh, my favorite thing about this game is one, the theme and how you feel thematically. Because what's really cool about this is you get plot cards that you need certain items that you know contribute to the plot. So if you have a bomb, you need an explosive and like a briefcase and stuff like that. And you have these items. Uh, so you get the items, and then if you're part of a certain affiliation, you might get some extra dice. So uh, it's like Hitler has to be in a non-fortified city. It's like, okay, so he's not there. So you, you feel like you're actually trying to track Hitler. And you're like, okay, he's there. I got all my items. We're good to go. And then you can go there and roll dice, and if you get a number of successes equal to or higher than his military support, you succeed. Gotcha. And how many times you're trying to go there and you're like, okay, whew, just, I just need to fucking do it. And you roll and you don't get it. You like are as disappointed as you would be right, if you didn't right. succeed in killing Hitler. Uh, and it's just, it's so much fun. Like, that is another game where everyone works together uh, in, a, in a good way. Um, and like you said, the, the historical aspect of it too. Because the event cards come in like sections. There's like level one through seven. Mm -hmm. And once you run out, you go, which, which opens up more... Uh, areas like Poland are, are easier to go to and stuff right. like that, um, and which to contribute to the actual theme. And what's really cool is when you kill him, depending on which area you do it, at the back it tells you how many lives you 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 saved. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So if you if you kill him in era seven, you, you saved a hundred, you saved one million Jews. It's like, all right. I mean, I don't feel too terrible. Then you look at it, if you kill him in era one, it's like ten, and you're yeah. like, you saved ten Jews. You, you saved ten Jews. Yeah. I mean, ten million. You save 10 million Jews, so it's just nice. Yeah. Everything's grounded in theme. Funny story, my cousins, who are live in Germany, and my family's full-blooded German, when they saw that run-through, they were cracking up, because they are like, only in America would that game be made. That would never be made overseas in Germany. Because we're over it. We're not. We're not <laughs> over it. We got over it. We're so, like, eh, Germany, you're like, cool. Eh, Nazis, things. were they really such bad people? Some people don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, and Brad's one of them. That's your number five. <laughs> uh, my number five from this point on, these are like shitty uh, games. Like uh, a huge <laughs> step ahead, above everything else I've said. You know, All right. It's a big gap from six to five. Okay. Um, my number five is going to be on your list. I know. Black Orchestra. No. <laughs> it's Aeon's it. End. Oh, wow. Um, I figured that'd be way higher because you were like head over heels for it. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> a really good game. Wow. Games. All Love right. It. Um, and I haven't gotten to play it as much okay. to really unlock a lot of the other gotcha. characters and stuff gotcha. to see. Um, it's 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 a whole different kind of deck builder. Yeah. You know, like because I he sh you showed it to me that one time a handful of months ago, um, where you're actually can control your discard pile. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, which is a big time thing. Um, you can prep. You get your spells prepped and to do stuff. I mean, you so you it, it's just different. It's not like when we play. A, like legendary game where mm -hmm. you drop a bunch, you do your stuff and go. You're yeah. prepping for a next turn. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like you have to think ahead. There's an extra level of thought to it. Yeah. Um, you're taking on a, a huge big bad guy that most of them like to kick you in the nuts. <laughs> um, yeah. And well, I, I remember and what hooked me on this game was because we played one time. Yep. And it was the very first time I played, and we we were down on the track. We, it, it was there was one. We were on the initiative cards where we drew, remember? Yep. And if we drew the monster, he won. There was two yeah. cards left. Yeah. If the if we the top card was his card, he won. If the if it was your card, we won. We won. And it was that card. Yeah. We won. And it was just like, you know. And yeah. every game seems to come down so close. Yeah. I've like, I've know, never had, I've played that probably like <clears throat> five or six times, which at this point is a lot of times. Right. Right. Um. And it's always come down to the wire. Right. Even though you're gonna feel like your back's up against the wall, and you're like, mm -hmm. there's no way. Like somewhere, somehow, right, it's right. still really close. And I think it's going to be elevated with the legacy oh, uh, Kickstarter cool. that came out. When that gets in here and it adds your own character, yeah, you, you're really? building your own character throughout all of it. And I don't know if they're doing. Were they doing a campaign? Was there? I think it was. Yeah, yeah legacy yeah. campaign to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your your character is built as yeah. you go, and then at the end it will be. A well, I wasn't character. sure if it was like kind of like a charter stone thing, where it's like a loose story, and you're just kind of making a game. I think, I think there's a campaign. Just gonna be a deal. I mean, that's what I take from it, but but um, so and it's just gonna add a bunch of like 
what, 70%, 75% of the legacy box is going to be playable and the rest with of the rest everything else. Yes. So it's just adding more goodness to mm -hmm. what's already there. And Every so, monster is unique. Yep. It's and like I said, I love deck builders. I, I especially love unique deck builders, and that's mm -hmm. one of them. That's why that was a Kickstarter game too right, years right. ago. So they did something right. Yep. Uh, wow, I I'm surprised that's a number five. Yep. All right. Let's wait till you see the other four. <laughs> okay, <laughs> number four. Number four is Mechs versus Minions. Wow. Yep. So wow. I really enjoyed Mechs versus Minions when we got it. It's it's at this point where um it's like. A little bit nostalgic just because like it's just such good times down in Joplin with with Matt and it was always so fun I never had to worry like because sometimes when we do um, campaigns like pandemic for instance like there's just like a it's sense like, of uh, dread uh, going into it like I don't want to sit at a table for two hours and just be mad like yeah <laughs> yeah um, pandemic will do that to you <laughs> like Max you could be mad but you're having so much fun with your friends um and that's why and that's at the root of it why I like co-op games because if you can be mad but like you're, you're mad with you're everyone. all mad together yeah <laughs> um and I'd rather be mad with people instead of at people that's but, true um I really I really did enjoy it because I've never I've never played League of Legends yeah. But um, I still feel like I really got into it and just like knowing like Matt had and he really enjoyed it. And, mm -hmm. and then I think, have you played it? I mean, well, I, I, I tried League and I'm, uh -huh. I tried it just to, because I was, we were playing that. Gotcha. Um, it's definitely not my kind of game and it's loosely based off League. Like the game is right. nothing like that. Right. Game. No, I know. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I do know that. But I thought that like all the characters were cute. The board, like every, you're right, like everything when it comes down to it, it was just a really good well manufactured game. Mm -hmm. Every scenario was unique. It mm -hmm. wasn't like repeats where it's like, okay, we're doing like like legacy pandemic legacy and stuff like that. It's just like you're like it, number one is uh, specifically was like the first four games were kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Just added a little bit more uh, until it did finally kick off, but it had to be a big fucking bam. Now the game's different. Yeah. League, it was like, oh, what's this? What's this story? What's this little uh, scenario going to yeah, be like? Yeah, what's happening now? I yeah. wish they would do expansions. I wish they would do something. I wish they would do another one. <laughs> yeah, like make another game. Like obviously that one was good. Do it. Okay, yep, that so that's a good one. Uh, okay. My number four is Arkham Horror LCG, uh, which is funny because it's a deck builder and uh, it's it's at this it's this high on the list. Uh, doing a series for it on the channel. At this point, we did do the discussion and stuff like that. Now we're just going through. They have supported this game like no other. There are just so many packs. Yep. Um, they, they've been running like just the, the same LCGs. Do like Netrunner. Yeah, they've just kind of been doing every that. Every month, two months, and something yep. else comes out. Yep. Just so Arkham Horror uh, LCG, if you don't know, is uh, basically Ar it's Arkham Horror by the deck builder. Um, so... But it's it's a light deck builder because you start out with your your character has their own specific deck and then over time you get experience based on what you do in the story that you can spend on certain cards. You don't have like four hundred cards to your availability. It's like no, your character like I'm playing Roland Bank, so he's the the Fed, so I can only have like blue cards and some of these cards. I can't have like magic all of a sudden. So it's like deck construction. Deck, yeah, it's more deck construction than yeah. deck building. Yeah. And I really like it. I'm having a, a fantastic time with uh, my friend Devin doing it. Uh, he really likes it too. Um, I love the story elements. How based on how you do in the story, it affects kind of what what happens next. Um, I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say about it. Uh, your characters will feel unique, even if like even if you have some of the same cards. Like at this point, he's playing Rex Murphy, so he's the clue getter. Like, he has ways to get out of trouble, get us clues, which will advance the thing. I don't really have a way to do that, but I have, like, this trench coat of holding. It's just right. like, okay, um, yes, now I have a shotgun and dynamite right. and stuff like that. The thing I liked about it is a lot of those LCGs, like, if you think about uh, the Lord of the Rings yeah. card game and stuff, that one has a difficulty Oh, you're you right. Change yep. the difficulty. If you yep. want it to be harder, you add more of those ones. Of those terrible, token. terrible yeah. tokens. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. Right. So I mean, that's that's cool because you can adjust mm -hmm. it. If it's if you have one scenario, it's just impossible. Yeah, you, you can change it to make it kind of easier. Make it easier so you can yeah. Story rolling. I really like. Yeah, that's actually the other thing was the tokens were were very different. Right. How you succeeded and so it wasn't based off dice. It's still just as random, but you since you can alter the bag, mm -hmm. it kind of skews in your favor. I like. Because if you make certain choices, new tokens get added to right. the bag. Um, 
if you, I mean, also through choices, you can be permanently traumatized, and eventually that's how your characters die. So we're in the Dunwich Horror thing from the main game, and we're carrying our characters over. And right now, my guy starts with three sanity because he's so fucked up, and he only can handle five. So eventually, if I get traumatized twice mentally, he's going to be <laughs> mentally insane, so I have to get a new guy. Um, it's, it's so good. Uh, I, I love it a lot. So that's my number four. My number four is a deck builder. Is it Marvel Legendary? It okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, Marvel Legendary for a few reasons. Um, it's a, an unlimited amount of combinations and stuff for it. I mean, they, they keep coming out with sets and sets and sets, but it doesn't get overwhelming. And well, it does when you're carrying it all. <laughs> but but uh, it doesn't get overwhelming because, you know, you just choose, you know, choose your heroes, you pick a... There's so many schemes at this point yeah. that it feels fresh all the time. Have like, you done the Infinity Gauntlet one? No, I haven't. Okay, I want to try um, it. But they, you know, I mean, on my stack, because I have all this... I mean, my stack of schemes is probably like this, yeah. you know, and... It's probably and, bigger, dude. Yeah, and each one of those is a, is a way to play the game, and it changes the game, mm -hmm. so it's almost like just a ton of different Marvel games in one, you know? Yeah. And uh, at this point, I mean... You would think they've done all the characters, but they haven't. No, they the haven't. World War Hulk uh, big box just came out. Yep. It has all these people from the Hulk, World War Hulk series of so comics and stuff. I have no and idea who they are. They did add a really cool element to that because you can be Bruce Banner and there's a transform keyword. Oh, cool. And you cool. can transform him and he can become the super powerful Hulk. And oh, awesome. And all these different stuff. So, um, but, you know, I mean, they've, they've done... Everything you know, and there was a, mm -hmm. the newest expansion actually was a re well not expansion a re-release of the core box. Oh, the tenth edition. At Gen one. Con was the using the MC universe MC universe uh, movie art, which I uh, that's not for me. But it, it has one extra uh, mastermind one other thing. I'm not going to buy it for that. Right. Just because it would it's, just it's got all the same cards <laughs> with movie art yeah. from that deal, but but um. I like it because it's deck builder, I like it because it's marble, and I like it because it's new and fresh every single time yeah. you play it. Even the base game comes with a lot, because yeah, I bought the base game, and I bought the Deadpool expansion and Guardians of the Galaxy, Yeah. and I was like, this is this is still a lot right. to and, do. And they, they're creative, because they come up with all these different keywords and stuff, like the Civil War set that came out, they actually would split cards in half, so it would be two characters, and they were characters that were like a duo in the comic era, mm -hmm. and you know one would have an ability and and purchase power recruiting power and one would have attack power and another ability and you get to choose which one of those two when you play it mm -hmm. you know so i mean they, they they're constantly coming up with innovative ways to keep it rolling Fresh. It's, it's it's really cool yeah yeah that's a good one that's a good one and if you sleep it it's going to cost you a fortune trust me <laughs> that is true i probably won't <laughs> i usually don't sleeve cards i think arkham horror is the only game i have everything sleeved and that's just because i bought it from someone and most of the stuff was sleep. Right. So at this point I'm just gonna keep sleeping. Number three Alright It starts with a B. It starts with a B is it betrayal at the house on the hill? No it is. Wow. Wow. So wow. Wow. So this one falls into several of my favorite categories of mystery. You got the spookiness. You got a traitor mechanic when it comes down to it, but you don't know who it's going to be. Mm. Um, but one of the things that I'm learning is that I like to put together the board a <laughs> lot. I think it's hilarious to have, like, a murder room right next to, like, the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, like, or, like, the basement some entrance. Some ritual is right... is right next to, like, some tree house. It's so, like, what? Yeah, so this may be an obvious question, but you guys need the updated... Uh, yes. The, yeah. So, oh. component-wise, <laughs> the game is pretty <laughs> shitty. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and even Betrayal of Baldur's Gate was no better. At least the thing stayed on, though. Oh. Um, now, do you like Baldur's Gate better than the original? I don't even remember Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate was the D and D one that we played with. It's the yeah. same game. It's the same exact time. game, just D and D. I'm gonna say I don't like it better. I guess since you didn't remember. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to tell. <laughs> uh, that one has also been on the channel because yeah. uh, we did the clown thing. What about Legacy? Oh, I'm getting Yeah, Legacy. oh, I didn't tell you. They're doing the Betrayal of the House on the Hill Legacy. Yes. Don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't like, we'll know have either, to see. It's probably going to flop. Intrigued. It's probably going to suck, <laughs> but we're, I'm still going to get it because who knows? It could be a gem. You could yeah. create your own, you know, uh, what do they call them? 
haunts. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. It's, Maybe. Yeah. yeah, but and then that's that's one thing too. I, I like the haunts. I like how it just. Um, I I don't know. It's just the feel. I will say the very first time we played it though, um, if you don't know what you're doing, like. Yeah. It's kind of rough because I won't forget being in a room with Kyle, just being like, "What's the big?" What's, What's the, the banshee? banshee? And like, eventually Seth was like, are you guys ready? And we're like, it's been like 20 minutes. And I'm like, like, guys, the game yeah. isn't that hard. <laughs> like, We were like, I guess so. And then Seth said something about like, he's the banshee. And we were like, I oh. came out and I put out the banshee token and they're like, oh, yeah. yeah that game is, we is like so not confused. that intuitive for new players. Well, unless they are the ones that, if they're that, not the they, trainer, unless they are the ones that turn. No, I think if they are the ones that turn, then it's harder. Really? They, they, well, they're the ones that have to walk away and be like, and like, That's true. learn their thing. Whereas if they're like with me, I can be like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Right. Or if I'm the trader, I can leave, and at least they're with someone yeah. they can That's figure true. it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, the game, like, the game is a lot of fun, but it can definitely be like a hit and miss with mm -hmm. those haunts. Like yeah. I played Baldur's Gate with three friends uh, last month, and I could tell they were not into it. Um, so. It's just, I mean, I, I like it. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Good choice! Uh, my number three has already been mentioned by you. By me? Yep. Probably Aeon's in. It is Aeon's in. <laughs> uh, pretty much everything you said, this was actually one introduced to me by John. Funny enough, all those years ago when things didn't suck. <laughs> uh, but, because I, I was like, dude, I, I hate deck builders. And he's like, just try it. And I was like, this game is fucking amazing. One, because it's cooperative. And two... As you mentioned, I love the initiative system, how it's a deck, so you don't really know what's going to happen. I love how the monsters are unique, they have their own abilities, and they have that track. I love the fact that you, like, your deck building is, you're not going to have a deck right. by the end of it. You're right. going to have 20 cards, maybe. Um, but something you didn't mention, which I also think is really unique, is you are breach mages. So you cast your spells through these portals or these breaches yes, that yes. you have to unlock and so you're on you, and they can hold um and so you can be like okay well i'm a pre you prep these spells to be able to use and that's how you can get combos like okay i can cast your prep spell to add so i can do all this damage on my turn but then you won't have anything or you unlock them and if you unlock them you can prep a spell right then and there it's it's a very very solid um deck builder and the reason why it's so high just because of the sheer strategy that you have to have on it, and especially as you said with the discard pile, it's like okay, so I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna use these in this order so I can, so next turn, like as the cards I buy, they're gonna come in this combination. Right. It's really, really good. I cannot wait for the legacy uh, to come out. I don't know when it's coming out. I think November. Be too much longer. Yeah, sometime this year was what I I believe it was um supposed to come out, but it's gonna be awesome. So that's my number three. My number three is a game that I've taught you guys. Thank you, Thomas. And was it the last time we played? And no, it's been a while. Oh, okay. I think it was the first time Cat came over. Oh, man. Fire Team Zero. Yeah. I forgot oh, about I that like, one. We're reaching far now. <laughs> I forgot that that was a game. Yes, Fire <laughs> Team Zero. Still at number three, yeah, and you haven't three. played it in forever? I still love it. Wow. Okay. It's, I don't have a play it because it's like buried. I, like, <laughs> I have so much other stuff. And you don't want to taint it since we uh, won last time. Uh, <laughs> oh, you now want, I remember. You don't want to yeah. lose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's an alt <laughs> alternate universe World War II horror game. You it know, is, it, it, you're good. There's four characters. It's a four-player co-op, um, and it's a military. I mean, you're military. Our mm -hmm. cards are all like yeah, grenades and all this stuff. But then there's all these unholy, well, the very first yeah, like abominations. <laughs> and what it is, what's cool about it is the core box comes with three different families of monsters. It's like, like one main one and then a bunch of its henchmen, and you play through a little campaign. It's three. Uh, there's three um, missions using one family. And then, like, you pass that little mini campaign, and then you just keep moving on, mm -hmm. and there's messing with the next kind of bad guys. And then they've come out with two big boxes, the Africa Cycle and the Europe Cycle, and that adds a whole nother campaign with monsters and stuff. And um, it's dice rolling. Um, it's brutal. Yeah. Because their spawn points, they just constantly are spawning. And you is, that, is that... Are you, have you done... How many scenarios have you done? Just the two? Four. You've done four? Are they yeah, all kind two. of that spawn kind of thing? They all they have the spawn stuff. The thing that hurt with the first one is because of what was spawning. So because it was just those, those spiders, spiders or whatever things. they were. 
Yeah. And they were so fast. Yeah. And there were so many trees. Like yeah. the other ones are like you're in a city, so you have full movement. You gotcha. Have the, you know, so you can maneuver a little better and stuff. And and they're they're really different scenarios. You may have to rescue something here. You may need to find something here. Doing these different things now. Um, I don't like the coin. The coin. It's unique. Is, I get it. Is a deal where if it's it's a it's an old you know, it's a metal coin. If you get somebody dead. You can flip the coin and resurrect them. Now there's a stack of event cards that come through, and one of them says flip the coin face down. Yeah. But there's also one that says flip it face back up in that same deck. Okay. Now, if that becomes an issue, because it is something I've read on BGG, if that whole coin thing is an issue, just get rid of the card. Because, no, okay. you know, like, set it out. That's what some people do. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, in itself, it's a tough game even yeah. without that issue. Yeah. You know I mean? We won by, like, a turn. Yeah, and it's it's brutal because you can't seal up the portals that they're coming out of, mm -hmm. which I wish would be a thing, but I can understand why, because it... Then it'd be way too easy. It's, it's a scary game. Yeah. I mean, you got, you get... It's a... Because you know they're coming after you. And, right. And then they get some massive attacks and stuff, and you really have to work together, because the well, last thing I'll say is every card you have is split diagonally. Uh, one oh, side yeah. is a attack, and then another side is a reaction that you can play to help somebody else. So you have to really weigh, because your hand is your is your, your life, life at that time. Right. You really have to weigh if it's your... Because you get to draw up at the beginning of the round. But you really have to uh, weigh if you're going to do this massive attack or it has this really cool thing that may help protect your buddy that's about to die over there and stuff yeah. so you have to it's got a lot of interesting decisions it's not it's a, kind of an under the radar game yeah i don't um, know why it's not getting yeah i i got off. it for it's been a kickstarter there's a kick they had a kickstarter a year ago that still has a, it's getting ready to start oh i fun, see you know getting put back out there in the wild but um but you know it's it's a pretty expensive game i got mine mm -hmm. for 30 i got mine for 35 bucks from a guy that was just giving it away. Just fuck it. I don't but, it. <laughs> but this anyways, first scenario is too hard. <laughs> I can't beat it. <laughs> but um, if you can find it, check it out because it's it's a very very good and challenging. That's what Brad game. found out. If he can't beat a game, just bring Cat over. Yeah, because that's with Thanos Rising too. I couldn't beat it either. And, <laughs> and then and we came that. over and like like <laughs> and then we won. And then with with Fire Team Zero, hit you and I tried it and we lost in like five seconds. And I'm like, and then Cat came over and we won. So. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, that that is a fun game. Um, yeah. I, it probably would make a list, uh, if not this list, a list. Yeah. Um, I would just need to play it more. Yeah. All right, number two. All right, it is guess, 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 just, just guess. guess out of the all just the co-op games. It's Arkham Fucking, Horror. Wow, I figured that was number one. So well, I don't know where something your number one took is. its dang place. It is it Charter Stone? It was number one for five years. No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Wow. Almost. Okay. All right. Number one. I'm excited to hear what your number one is now. It's part cheesy. Um, That's not even co-op. <laughs> <laughs> it's sorry. <laughs> no, I chose to bump down Arkham Horror. Um, oh, I'm not going to explain my number one, but I, cho <laughs> I, I chose to bump it down for a reason, and it's just because like it will always be one of my favorite games, but um, something bigger and better took its place in my opinion. But, I mean, I've talked about it. Forever and ever. Arkham Horror is one of the first games that Seth and I started playing, so that's that's pretty much why I like it, but also I really like the Cthulhu universe. Um, I didn't make it um, Elder... I almost said Elder Scroll. <laughs> Elder Scrolls didn't make it. Elder, El, Elder Sign. Damn it, Elder Tor. I didn't choose to make it El, um, Elder Tor just because there's something about Arkham that, like, in a sick way, I like better than the streamlined version. Oh, I, I version. totally like, get it, yeah. It's 100% nostalgia, um, even if, like, I complain during a game of it. Like, I still will always want to go back to it. I mean, Arkham Horror does things better than Eldritch Horror. It's just for teaching purposes. Oh, yeah. Eldritch is way easier to bring to the table. Yeah, um, yeah Arkham Horror is, is fantastic. Wow, that was your number two. Number two. My number two is a series I'm doing on the channel. Um, I've also done a discussion that's at this point I just record when I play it, and I play it solo, um, and that, and also uh, I'm doing the community one called Gloomhaven. Um, you don't like Gloomhaven? I don't hate it. There's one mechanic that makes it so <laughs> I can see, and I, and I agree with no. your mechanic. Um, you haven't played it. Uh, Gloomhaven is like the 
epitome of board game RPG. Like, if you're not playing a tabletop RPG, this is <laughs> this I is would argue that. But you <laughs> say folklore. No. As well, what would you say? Over Brimstone. Oh, that's right. Sorry. But <laughs> Gloomhaven is more streamlined than <laughs> Brimstone. <laughs> it is. Anyway. <laughs> well, there's an actual campaign to Gloomhaven. There's not to Brimstone. You said that it's today. It's a campaign, which mine. You can choose whatever you want to go. Yeah, but they don't connect. Yeah. Um, so Gloomhaven yes. is a fantastic uh, game. Like, I would say just really go watch the discussion because I talk yeah. about it at length. But fantastic campaign, unique world, um, awesome mechanics. Like, I, I love the, the deck mechanic, how your character has his own deck um, that is, pertains to him. And you play, you know, the two cards. One is uh, you do a top ability and bottom ability. One of them is your initiative. Um, so you can control at what point you go, um, and then if it's like, if certain situations arise and change based on what you plan to do, you can still have the versatility to like swap. Okay, I was going to do the top one on this card, now I'm going to do the bottom because it makes more sense. It's, it's so, it's so cool. Like, uh, you know, the, the RPG elements of the campaign, like I'm doing the community one, which is fun, and that's the one where I'm doing with my friend Devin. Um, he the, he originally didn't really care for the game, but now that he's he's playing the Mind Thief, and once it's like the character is now his. Like the first time we just did the first scenario, and he used my two characters, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Well, I didn't really make them," so he's really digging his the Mind Thief, and I'm doing the the Stone Heart or the Crag Heart. Uh, I just, I love the retirement system, even though I haven't done it yet. I like the fact that they can like meet an objective and like be like, all right, I'm done doing what I'm doing. You get you unlock all these new characters. There's an expansion coming out, which there probably didn't need to be because there's 95 scenarios in the base game. Um, some of them I don't even. I highly doubt you do all of them in the campaign. I don't know if there's an official end. Actually, there has to be. Um, but I'm I'm. I, I love it, and I have a, I have a fun time playing it solo. Uh, what's your complaint? <laughs> My complaint is the hand management system. Okay. And how the deck. Every time I've played it, I like I, mean, I exhaust right before the final room. Yeah. Because of the way you have to just get rid of a card in order to get your cards back in hand and oh, when stuff you like rest. that. And I I like it. I think it's thematic because you you're not just some all powerful guy who can go on forever. Um, otherwise, one the game would be too easy. Um, but I can definitely see how that would be a letdown when you're not there for the final thing. I haven't had that happen uh, since when I've played. I've I've had people exhaust during the fight, mm -hmm. um, but I've never had it to where it's before. Unless I was doing really bad and I was taking a bunch of damage, and I'm like, okay, crap, because you can discard one card and not take any damage. Mm -hmm. But um, I will, I like that. I just I, the only thing I agree with you. I just wish if you did a long rest, you didn't have to discard. You, yeah, but you either get way, you had to lose a card. Yeah. Just, if you did a quick rest, it was random. Yep. And if you did a long rest, you, you get to still choose. Had, and the character I played only had eleven card deck. That's a lot of cards, though. I understand. Did you play the Stone Heart? Uh, the big guy with the horns. Oh, the the uh, uh, yeah, whatever. I know is. who he is. Yep. Or he, ten card deck. He has ten cards. The Crag Heart has yeah, eleven. Yeah, but, but still, like when you're when you're having to discard a card every time to rest mm -hmm. and stuff, it's like... But that takes a long time uh, to do, and you can get items to mitigate damage and stuff like that. Um, I've only ever played it solo and at two players, yeah. so maybe with... You play with four? You play with three? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, and it's probably just me. Not, it's because it's a lot of a puzzle game. It's, it's a lot yeah. of it's puzzle and knowing yeah. how to use your stuff. And mm -hmm. I, The only thing I wish, and I've only done seven out of the 95, is... Um, it, it is a dungeon crawl, pretty much, at, a, at its core. Um, I'm hoping, because the, the story and, and what, what's happening will change how the scenario plays out, but I'm hoping they do other things other than to fight. Which they have, I guess. One of them was I needed to actually collect samples, so I had to right. actually play my loot card to pick something up. I couldn't just land on it and get it. So that they, they are starting to do different things. I love it. I can definitely see why it's number one, but I don't agree that it should have been number one on BGG so quick. Right. Like, it's not fair to games that have been around for 15 years and have been solid games since then. A, a new game came, comes out, it's like, oh, best game in the world. It's like, it's not, but it's it's damn near good. Um, or fantastic. So that's my number two. My number two is the other Cthulhu. Arkham Horror LCG? Nope. Really? Nope. Elder Tour? 
Nope. And what the f- Oh, you just said you didn't like it. I have no fucking clue. Mansions of Madness, second edition. What a good <laughs> yeah. choice. Um, I forgot about that game. I have, <laughs> I have all that stuff, and I haven't opened up the last couple of expansions and stuff, but I've, I've paid for all the extra missions on the iPad and everything just to um, have it all, and it's... It's nuts. Yeah. Like, I mean, that as far as digital device into a game, mm -hmm. it doesn't get any better. Fantasy Flight did something right. Um, yeah. I wish they would support Imperial Assault one like they have this one. Do they only have the base game for Imperial yeah, Assault they still? still? do. Really? Interesting. Right. But anyway, um, I haven't done this yet, but I went to a friend's house and he hooked his, somehow hooked his computer up to his surround sound speakers and big screen TV and had it on his TV with surround oh, sound cool. while we had the card table out in the middle, you know, the that's table out in the cool. middle and played it. Gosh. So he had this, I mean, well, it sounded you, like you were in the haunted house, you know, is, it, or, is it not just so, an app? I thought you I can actually, I, I think you can go on there, on, I thought there was a site for it. Well, Maybe I not. Used, I don't know. I, I, I have the iPad out and that's what I use. I just okay. set on the end and, yeah. and run it, but, but, um, you know, I can play solo, mm -hmm. you know, you can run a nice 40 minute mission mm -hmm. to a or six hour six one. Hour one. <laughs> yeah, we've done the six <laughs> hour one know? and it's fun. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, oh, can well, we finish? Tough it? Ones. These last couple scenarios, because I've, when you buy, when you have the app and you buy new expansions, you go on to it and you can say what products you mm -hmm. own and then it brings up the deal. So you like start looking, scrolling through what right. missions are there. There's a lot of them that are hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, sitting there because they have the ratings. Okay, there's a two star, five, yeah. five, five, and, five. <laughs> and it's just nuts because I played uh, Mansions of Madness first edition a lot back in the day mm -hmm. as I never played the, the Keeper. Keeper or whatever. But it was so much <laughs> stupid setup, you know, and it was so much for them to do, and like they were so powerful, they just sit there and throw a bunch of crap at you. And you're like, damn. You talk about the you keeper know? was yeah. overpowered. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, like the one mission, the guy, the guy that was doing it, just like set everything on fire. Yeah, it's <laughs> like yeah, we'll put fire here, fire, 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 fire. We did a uh, mansion uh, <laughs> a scenario for the first edition. And the rule book had the picture wrong, oh, so one yeah. of the tiles was flipped incorrectly, so they couldn't get to the second clue. Gotcha. And I was like, and we were sitting there, and I was like, no, guys, it's somewhere. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, that's wrong. So yeah, first edition is garbage yeah. compared we to were second. We were like running around. We we're like, oh, maybe it's like a maybe it's later. They, they searched like... everything, and I was like, it, it's not. It's not there. Well, and the, and the second edition, you know, it just it just has that opening room tile. Yep, and where to put stuff, and as you go, I mean, it's it, it's it's Mansions of Madness for dummies. Really, it just tells you where to set stuff. You keep track of everything on there. So thematic. Um, the one thing I really applaud at Fantasy Flight for doing as well is the people that had the first edition could use, you know, still could bring over their deals. Um, I didn't. I so, did. so I bought those two, the recurring nightmares and whatever. Oh, okay. that Brought in all the tiles, and everything mm -hmm. from the first edition. Yeah. And I'm really glad they did that. So yeah, they didn't have smart. to do that. Right. Because uh, not log into it. It's like, sorry, you're out of luck. Right. <laughs> Buy our new costs, so, our new stuff. What do you think of the insanity cards? I <laughs> hate them. I think they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. Funny enough, so this is actually. I think this is my friend Devin's favorite game. Like I like, I'm pretty sure like every game he he would if I suggested the let's play that he mm -hmm. would, um, and it was super funny because we were doing the insanity cards and I, I don't like them at all. I think they break theme, um, or, or gameplay. It's just like sorry guys, I'm glad this was called, but I guess I n now have to attack you. I I don't like them at all. Um, and I asked on the board game group what yeah. people thought. It was a mixed review. Some people hated them. Yeah. Some people really liked them. I like them just because. I mean, if you go crazy in a deal, what's what you what are you gonna do? You know, I mean, yeah. in real life, if you go insane, it's just it's a, it mer yeah, yeah, it's a, it's just immersion breaking for me. But it was yeah. funny because the the worst one really, and it's like obvious that what you're doing is the fire one, mm -hmm. where you just have to go start fires. And like I got it last time we played, and I hated it. And then we played it again with uh, his his girlfriend. And she went insane, and he's like, don't worry, there's only one in the deck. And she drew it. Yes. So, well, it's like a hit and miss, because some of them are fine. Yeah. Uh, others are just like, wow, so you guys are just going to know I'm starting fires and go stop it. Well, this is the, this game's why Betrayal isn't on my list. Oh, okay. Because Haunted House, stuff yeah. like that. This one, just the ambiance of having the music going and, and the app support and stuff. Yep, yep. Just, 
so often. That's, that's getting, a good stuff one. keeps coming out. Yeah, there's another constantly. expansion coming out. I have it. The, the no, there's Sanctum. another one. Oh, there's another one? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the Sanctum just came out like a month or so ago. Maybe that's it. Or a couple months. I'm whatever. pretty sure. It's either on pre-order or something. Okay. Um, I'm not open about it. It's I not. Just... It's I, It's not on my list. Um, and I think it's because uh, most of the scenarios, for the most part, you can really only play once. Like you'll get the like it'll change where you know items and stuff are, but yeah. the story is going to be the same. And the monsters are always different. Yeah. So it too. it changes the game, but the the story is the mm -hmm. same, which is the same with first edition. But uh, I just like variety. I mean, granted, we've done multiple ones. And my Devin did like one of the hard ones and he was like it's fucking brutal yeah. and we we did one which was more story based and we were just like what well, we lost we did the the museum one mm -hmm. and yep yeah but I, I love it it's it's yeah i haven't had a scenario on that one yeah i haven't had a scenario in that one that sucked either yeah yeah all right are we, are we guessing we are gonna now? guess number I'm, one i'm gonna go ahead and guess i'm gonna guess mansions madness. of madness it's almost like you're absolutely right <laughs> I was like, okay, if it's not Arkham, and then you mentioned Mansion, I was like, oh, that's oh, another one. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's that one. I was like, man, it's crazy. Well. I'm not. I'm not obviously not going to be long-winded. Um, I I like it because it does. It has the um, you get to lay down tiles, so you get to discover. You don't get to build the map, but you get to discover the map. It's She's definitely a Fletcher. I interactive. Any game, that, <laughs> any game that you get to build something, I think it's you would fine. like. Yeah. Um, it's interactive. It's storytelling. Mm -hmm. Um, it's. 100% co op because until somebody goes insane, I until, say. And even then, I, I don't. I have mixed feelings about insanity. Like I said, I hate it, and I and I pretty much do. My feelings do typically go towards hating it, but it's like, I like the air of like, what do you have to do? I think I just don't like some of them because they're so obvious. And you can just keep them out. Yeah. That's so. what I said about the fire one. Yeah, I'll probably just and shove you, that one up my ass. And then you did, and then Marcy got it, and I was like, what? Like, yeah, and I was just like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, uh, like I said, I won't, I won't spend too much time on it. But like, it has easily, like, won me over, and I think it is the storytelling aspect of it because we, we, didn't do the Innsmouth one. Oh, that we you're lost, right. You could. We lost that one, and it, and it ended how it ended, and yep. it did it again, and I can't remember if you. It was lost, different. No, you're, you're right. It did change. I so, forgot. So results do I don't know vary. why it's not on my list then. I guess I'm just stupid. <laughs> I'm a shit. fucking <laughs> garbage human being. So, uh, yes, I think that's my number one now. Because, yeah. like, if, if, at any point, like, unless, it, 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 unless yeah, I'm just not in the mood to play a game, I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll play that. Yep, it, it, would be, it would be on the list. So my honorable mention to number one is Mansions of Madness. <laughs> um, can you guys guess my number one? You, It's not on your list, obviously. Jesus you haven't played Christ. it. Um, I did I mention it. No, you know, I have sure. mentioned it earlier today, though. Hold on. And uh, do you have your other list? Yeah. I and it's on the channel. I it, I have put it on the channel. Okay, hold on. I have one guess. You have to give me two guesses. All right, fine. You're looking um, in the wrong spot. Those are games I haven't played. I'm actually. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that it's. I'm just gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna say it's Spirit Island. Oh. That's my guess. That's my. That's my number yeah, one. Yeah, you did chalk that up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, good call. Good call. It, it is Spirit Island. I was going to say Charter Stone. So, that's not competitive. That's not competitive. No, it's not. <laughs> it's no, so cool. You Charter Stone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spirit Island is my number one. Um, oh, man. Where do I even begin? It has uh, islands. It has islands in it. it yes, yeah, that's it. And spirits. <laughs> no, uh, Theme shoots this one up, up very high. And... And you know how I mentioned how I kind of built my list on how much you kind of have to work together? Mm. Uh, this one is the epitome of that. Like, so much. So Because every spirit is different. All their cards are different. Uh, and it's like, I love that slow, fast aspect. Some of the, uh, the cards, your spirit powers, are, one, extremely thematic. And two, you can do a fast one, which means before the invaders go, you get to act. Or you can do a slow one, and it's like, okay, so if I do this, this is going to let you do that. And if that lets you do that, then I'll let him do this. And then we'll be able to kill a whole bunch of these invaders. Um, and Because they just keep popping up, building cities and building these towns and just screwing everything over. And you're trying to work together um, to, to cr uh, cause fear. Uh, and as, as you do enough fear, then like they're starting to like, evacuate. They're like, fuck this island. It's obviously haunted. Um... And it's, I, I don't know, like, I love that 
that strategy that everyone has to do and every spirit is really cool and there's some where it was like you you scared someone so much or you took like one of the cards of powers was yeah essentially you feared them so much or you took control that one of the river spirits caused like like the the water to rise and you made them drown themselves it's just like like these combinations of stories and, and effects that happen that it just oozes theme and that's just the base game they have the, they had an expansion which I think came with two spirits, and I believe there are promo spirits that I need to pick up. But then, and not only that, you can have the invaders have special abilities. They can be of a certain faction, which changes. And there's these scenarios. Um, the the components like are pretty awful actually. No. Like the the board is pretty bad, and like the, but they're not really used much. It was kind of they could have been cubes. Um, and it wouldn't have changed anything, but the artwork for the spells and for the the spirits are uh, are really well done. I, I'm a sucker for unique abilities, right. like um, in almost any game. That if you're, it's not like well, you're kind of like me, but um, like that one. What what's another one that does like oh, where Mar people have different abilities? Yeah, like Marco Spartacus. Polo. Uh, well, <laughs> good games, Brad. Come on. Well, I mean like I mean like <laughs> like. Cosmic Encounter, where it's like yeah. everyone has these like broken uh, abilities, or it's like, oh wow, that's really cool. So you have that, but it's co-op. Uh, Spirit Island is my favorite cooperative game. All right. Has it already been mentioned? Mine. Yep. Nope. Is it Pandemic? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh. My uh, closet Pandemic. <laughs> yeah, you actually play it all the time. <laughs> you created an app for it. Do I own it? Um, no. Have I played it? Yes. Oh, well, shit. Okay, if I don't own it, <laughs> but I have played it, have I played it with you? No. Oh, I don't know. Jesus. I've heard you talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna guess... Quick, let me see your co-op list. <laughs> Wait, but you don't own it. These are the ones you own. Oh, but I've played it. Well, I could have gotten rid of it. I don't know. I have no idea. Shadows of Brimstone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you literally just talked about it. You did just mention that. <laughs> I don't know why, I, I should have known that. <laughs> Alright, Shadows of Brimstone. Um, it is a game I was late to the party to. I didn't do the first Kickstarter and kick myself because I've spent about... <laughs> I hope well, my wife won't be watching this. I've probably spent about $1,200 Damn. getting caught up on all of the things I missed in the first Kickstarter. Oh, and I finally, I pretty much have everything. I'm still about $200 short. Of wow. Stuff. Um, well. And then it took me several days to put all the minis together and all that stuff. But I actually have a huge box full of uh, minis together. All the, There's so many tiles in the game. I have two file uh, hanging file folder deals that have the, the deals in there separated by world. Um, pretty much it's a western horror deal. There's a lot of... There's, it's not Cthulhu, but there's some Cthulhu mm. vibes going into it. You know, it's... Yeah. Um, but you're a posse of however many of people you, you go into the mines. There is a green um, The bandito. Bandito. <laughs> but you go into the mine and you're there. Yeah. There's a different scenario as you run through your campaign. It's a lot like an RPG. Um, I would suggest printing off a page and keep track of that instead of using all the chits and stuff that they have. Yeah. Um, I do have real poker chips that I use for uh, experience. Oh, okay. And I went through and bought a bunch of uh, dark stone crystals, you know, little purple crystals, mm -hmm. instead of using the little chits, so they're actual crystals. Oh, nice. And stuff. Nice. Um, but uh, you go through and there's an objective, there's huge monsters. I mean, there's monsters that stand, you know, I think about 12 inches tall, the mm -hmm. Shadow King, uh, stuff like that. And you just go through, you do it, and then after your mission, you go to town. Um, if you just had the base game, you go going to town is just... A simple thing, but you can buy the Frontier Town expansion, which lets you go into this whole town that has missions, even, and you can choose. I mean, it's 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 like playing an RPG, only it's yep. right out on the table in front of you. Yep. Um, and then to add on to that, they did the Forbidden Fortress Kickstarter, um, which is a uh, feudal Japan themed. That's gonna be cool. Um, and I went all in on that as well, like a dumbass. Um, you never gonna uh, play though. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you do have regular game nights yeah, for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, so it's pretty much, you can combine it with your West, Old West version, and you, your Old West people can go into this feudal <laughs> Japan world and do all this stuff, because they take place, actually, at the same time. 
Okay. So like, you know, the American West is here, and in the feudal Japan, they were kind of, it's kind of supposed to take place about the same type deals. So. I have no idea when right, right. Like history, I, I don't mean, think that's right. <laughs> it's not, it's not, but I mean like, they say, they say it's supposed to be kind of. All right. That's still cool. We're talking like a chunk of time and like, not like this exact okay. same deal. I mean, that's still cool. <clears throat> but they still cross over. Like there's portals that you go to other worlds. Like That's right. For yeah. the other thing, there's like five, there's five other worlds mm -hmm. for just the first one. So you go through portal, you can go anywhere. Yeah. You know, there's one world that's like an old World War II mold, uh, Alt universe World War Two. There's one that's a desert with toxic waste, like a post-apocalyptic. Oh, there's cool. A, there's a jungle. There's um, uh, the fire. All this. This the Forbidden Fortress that's coming out. You have the belly of the beast. So you're like inside. You're like the world is like inside. You're on the insides of this huge yeah. monster and stuff. Awesome. And it's um, the the possibilities are endless. And the the stories that are made from a game like that. With me and the Because they have the charts and stuff it. like that for mutations and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, cool. like you, when you get injured, you roll dice and that's the injury and you have to go get that fixed. Mm -hmm. you mutate. My character, at one point, I've gotten so I'm healed, <laughs> has a tentacle mustache, oh a grown gosh. over mouth, horns, I have rock skin, <laughs> and I have a little human coming out of my torso. Like oh my god. Like from Total Recall. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 little, yeah. Remember the little Yeah, yeah. I have a little quato and he actually holds a gun and gives me a free attack. So he, <laughs> he comes out, he's, you know, That's so cool. I, my guy's mutated to hell, but, so whenever I go to town, I get an unwanted attention marker as well. Because you're a freak! Right, right. <laughs> he looks so, <clears throat> so anyway, it's, it's, the possibilities are endless, and you can never play, yeah, you'll like, never catch everything up on it, you know? That was one you did like. Yeah, I liked it, and unfortunately missed our opportunity to put the little cowboy hat on Monster. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chad Denton, if you ever watch this. <laughs> totally putting you on blast. You, you didn't put the cowboy hat on the Monster. You can, you can take the hat off and put it on. He probably super glued it. Yeah, I think so. well, you didn't, we should have done it. it. Oh. We should have done it. Yeah, uh, Yeah. and I mean, he's... I, he's, I, I have my little modeling so, uh, uh, Scissor things. Okay, good. Right yeah, you pop it off, put yeah. on the big monster. Yeah. I just want to on look. the big. You mean like on the big? The huge big. Yeah, the with the wings. Yeah, the, the harbinger. Yeah. I wanted to have a little cowboy hat. That's, right. what, that was, that's what the plan was, but we never did. I forgot about it because it weirdly came. Yeah, you had to assemble the minis, which I didn't like. <coughs> um, that at least actually had. At least actually had artwork for their game because yeah. Flying Frog usually yeah. does the the B I, movie I will, like they're in costume. I will tell you that's the one thing that intimidated me about that game because I'd never in my life put together a mini. Um, and then I had all this stuff, because the set I bought, the initial starter, I bought the two cores and another thing, the guy had already put the set together for me. And then I had all these expansions I spent all this money on. I was like, I, over the summer I sat down for like three straight days and did it. And it was the most relaxing thing. It was yeah, the funnest yeah. thing, putting together minis. I even offered a guy online, I'd do all his minis. For really? His fortress for wow. Me. So. Cool, cool. So yeah, that's it. That's our cooperative games, everyone. Let us know what your cooperative games are uh, in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching this. And if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.